spine problems are huge. It's the number one cause of disability worldwide. It's a huge cost to industry. The spine is such a complex part of the body. There's so many tissues and things going on. The only way to really understand it fully is to, to use modeling and simulation. So this is an example of some work that we did looking at patient handling. And the reason that we looked at this is this is the most dangerous profession in the United States when it comes to low back injuries. Nurses hurt their backs more than, than any other profession. It's because they're moving people around. And so we've done a whole series of studies where we were trying to understand what is the risk, why are people getting injured, and how might we find ways to reduce those risks. And ultimately, what we then do is boil this down to what's going on inside the spine, what are the forces like on the discs of the spine, and are those going over tolerance limits. And so the red arrows that are being shown here represent the forces in individual discs. And we can see how high are those forces getting, are they getting to dangerous levels, and then we can make changes. So we can bring this same nurse in and have them do the job differently. So we take all of this quantitative data from individual subjects, build models, test them, see what's going on in the areas where you expect injuries to occur, and then we try to optimize the work to make it safer. This is an actual patient of one of the doctors that we work with. A major, major surgery is involved to deal with this where they're actually removing this tumor and having to shore up the spine because a huge portion of the spine is being taken out. And so we're able to take this spine model and perform the surgery virtually in the computer. So here is that same patient where now the surgery has been performed where they took out the tumor and a, and a lot of the associated bone and disc and put in a large metal cage and then put in a whole series of rods and screws and connectors to basically shore up the spine. Right now the, there's no manual for a surgery like this. This is incredibly complex. There aren't a whole lot of surgeons that will even do a surgery like this. Well if we can use these types of models to help them optimize and not do more surgery than you need to do, not extend the time of the surgery any more than it has to be. There's huge potential benefits to the patient. But the hope is that we want to develop this where we can bring their patients in, we can try out these virtual surgeries, see what works best for an individual patient before you actually cut into them in real life. We've been using Adam's since 2002 and it's been our go-to software package from the beginning. Certain parts of the spine you can model with multi-body dynamic with atoms and, and it does a great job but for other parts you need a, a much greater level of detail to better understand what's going on. So to just use finite element modeling doesn't capture everything that the, the spine is exposed to as well as what the, the disc in particular is exposed to and so that's where combining the two together is very valuable for us, where we can get these large motions, large, highly nonlinear dynamic loads, and apply them, but still get the response of a flexible body. With Datums, Nastran, and Patran, and Mark, we've been able to fully integrate it to everything that we do here in the lab. And MSC's been a great partner, helping us figure out ways to do this better and more optimal.